On August 22nd, Vladimir Putin held a meeting with national and local officials via video link on the situation in Belgorod, Bryansk and the Korsk regions. While the meeting mainly focused on the administrative challenges that the Ukrainian counter-invasion into Russian territory means, it also revealed some disturbing facts about the Kremlin's long-term planning when it comes to the warfare on its territory. It is now clear that the Russian government is preparing for a long war into the winter and it is preparing emergency measures to ready the border regions for it. Overall, it was a dry meeting. The matter of fact kind of A, B and C that are going on, you know, this kind of boring admin meetings, but that is maybe why it didn't attract a lot of attention in the in the media and, and newspapers. Nevertheless, I find this an important uh, moment for a few reasons. I clipped the most uh, important ones into a 23-minute segment at the end of this video, so please feel free to jump ahead if that's what you're mainly interested in. Um, now, what we do learn from this recorded uh, video link is that first of all, that this administrative meeting was broadcasted at all is certainly part of the Kremlin's PR approach to calm Russian citizens down and project an air of government authority and control over uh, a threat to the nation. This looks to me very similar to the almost forgotten corona emergency broadcasts that nearly every government around the world did in 2020 and 2021. You know, talking about operational planning, expert meetings and the allocation of funds uh, for government programs, that kind of invokes an air of government control and plans for something that is quite clearly a huge and, to a good extent, unpredictable challenge. Secondly, we also learned that Ukrainian shelling and the boots on the ground have caused substantive damage to Russian houses, agriculture and the general economy, especially in Kursk, of course. The federal government uh, and the regions are making budgets available now in the billions of rubles to counteract the damages. Uh, one interesting detail I found is that uh, the, the comment about uh, the government taking over the mortgages of, uh, of Russian citizens whose houses had been uh, damaged, that that mechanism is already up and running by now. Uh, compare that one, for, for instance, to the unending ordeal of many homeowners in Maui, Hawaii, after wildfires destroyed their homes there last year and insurance companies did not pay up, leaving these people in a completely different admin limbo. Well, if the Russian families who lost their houses are going to be held helped indeed, quickly or not is another matter, but we surely see how the Kremlin would like this to be the case. Next, we hear in the meeting that especially schooling is being discussed as a challenge as the new school year is starting uh, again just, just about now. So this topic, together with preparations to guarantee continuous heating in the winter months, are the points telling me that the Kremlin is actually preparing for continued hostilities in the border regions. The laying of optical fiber cables that are less susceptible to shelling than 5G antennas and the decision to allow for distant schooling so that kids would not have to go out when falling projectiles might endanger them. All of that tells me that Putin is not expecting these threats to subside anytime soon. So after transitioning to a war economy, the Russians are now getting ready to become a war society. And I don't mean that in the US, I don't mean that in the way that the US is a war society in which people occasionally watch uh, on TV channels how US wars 10,000 kilometers away are playing out. No, the Russians are getting ready to be shelled and to survive this and to deal with it and to keep society up and running while these hostilities on their very uh, homeland are, uh, are in progress. Overall, I'm, I'm, I'm really not thrilled. I'm, I'm actually very desperate about this development, not just because that this means that we are expecting to see more people to suffer more in the coming months inside Russia, but because this is yet another escalation in this already ugly war and the military answer that Russia will have to present to, 
to this uh, to this ongoing worsening of the war will itself then contribute to 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 the next round of escalation the collective west is reporting now that this incursion is going to make russia more likely to cut a deal beneficial to the ukrainians but the opposite might very well become the case in which uh, this now strengthens the argument of the hawks in the kremlin to continue the war much more heavy-handed which will in turn then probably again strengthen the hawks in Ukraine and the West who want uh, to hit Russia with long-range missiles, etc., etc. And on it goes. And Russia is will then roll out the programs that it's now creating for the border regions, for more regions, and so on and so forth. We are just grinding, we are marching still on slowly toward uh, all-out war. And at which point the Russians will actually say, screw it, we are going to hit uh, NATO, mo NATO motherland and bring the war home to, the, to NATO countries, the way that NATO countries right now think that bringing the war home to the Russians is a good idea because that will incentivize them to, uh, to, to scale everything back. Um, this development is, is, is very much up uh, and, and a possibility. So it is the escalation spiral and the, the collective West seems not to be worried about it. Nothing to worry about. Um, but at some point, at some point, this will bite them in their collective West butts uh, very badly. But OK, enough of the doom and gloom. Uh, here are the 23 minutes of the dry, boring meeting. Feel free to increase the playback speed of the video. Um, to, but have a listen to it to get a feeling for the preparations on the way now in Russia. Thank you. All right, thank you. Vyacheslav Vladimirovich Gladkov, please. Good afternoon, esteemed Vladimir Vladimirovich. You asked about interaction with law enforcement agencies. I would like to report that the interaction has been established. Recently, thanks to the personal decision of the Minister of Defense, relations with the Ministry of Defense are improving. I am confident that this interaction will help improve the protection of the population. Overall, the situation remains difficult, primarily due to shelling by artillery, MLRS, and drone attacks. In the past week, 19 civilians have been injured. We continue to restore housing. Unfortunately, in the Belgorod district, Shebekino district, and Shebekino, restoration is difficult, as there are three to five attacks on settlements daily, posing a threat to builders. Right now, we are choosing the optimal mechanism for recovery, as autumn is ahead, and it is necessary to rebuild without risking the lives of the builders. We are trying to establish this process. I am confident that we will reach an agreement with the people and avoid additional problems. We understand that the affected people deserve special attention and efforts. We are working in this direction. Currently, 35 settlements are closed. I am very grateful to you for the quick decisions made after my appeal at the previous meeting regarding the write-off of mortgages for destroyed housing. Denis Valentinovich, together with the Central Bank, promptly addressed this issue, and the mechanism is already starting to work. It was also possible to equalize payments, as there was previously a difference between payments in the Kursk and Belgorod regions, which created social tension. This issue has now been resolved. Today we will submit an application to the government and the Ministry of Finance for the allocation of funds for payments of 15,000 and 150,000 rubles in those localities that are closed and where resettlement has already begun. The preliminary damage to agricultural enterprises amounts to about 3 billion rubles. We will summarize the results at the end of October and submit an application for consideration to the government. The damage to businesses amounts to about 1 billion rubles. I would like to separately request, if possible, assistance in allocating 300 million rubles to support small and medium-sized businesses. Previously, we had such support thanks to your decision.
Three minimum wages for compensation in certain types of economic activities. We are currently holding many meetings because businesses are suffering due to the fact that activities there are often partially or completely halted. We really do not want people to leave, so this support is very important to us. We will provide a separate justification. There are currently 3,000 people in temporary accommodation points in the region and 1,000 people outside the region in temporary accommodation points in five regions. Thanks to your decision, more than 6,000, specifically 6,171 children, are outside the region in children's health camps. We are starting the school year in 113 schools. In the Belgorod district, we will have distance learning. We have worked with parents, and each parent has submitted a statement. The choice was given, in person or remote learning. Therefore, we decided that a parent, depending on the situation, can choose any option during the school year. If they are worried, the child studies at home. If the worries decrease, then in-person learning at school. However, we see a risk that parents, thinking about their children's future and understanding that remote learning is somewhat inferior to in-person, start considering moving to other regions. Therefore, now, without risking the children's lives, we are planning a large number of measures, such as building shelters and strengthening protection as part of anti-terrorism measures. We are installing concrete shelters on children's and sports grounds, as well as in front of school entrances. In places without basements, we create zones that allow people to hide from shrapnel. We install film on windows to hold the fragments. We also conduct training on providing first aid and behavior in difficult situations related to shelling. These sessions are held every day. Since the beginning of the year, we have conducted about 15,000 such sessions. We will continue this work. We have a request in this regard. We are very grateful to the Ministry of Digital Development for their help in restoring mobile communication. However, the enemy often destroys towers, and children living in frontline municipalities are left without internet, which breaks their connection with teachers. Therefore, we are asking to consider the allocation of additional funds for laying fiber optic cables. We have calculations and justifications that we are ready to provide. We hope for government assistance as summer has ended and sanatoriums and children's camps are now available. Children from the Ishibikinsky, Graveronsky, Krasnoyarushki, Borisovsky, and Valuisky districts will be able to go to other regions where they can safely and in person receive education. We have direct contact with the heads of the regions, but we will also request additional measures of interaction through the government. We are preparing for the heating season. We understand that due to the complex situation, it may be quite challenging. We have fully completed the work on creating backup generation for all central district hospitals. This concerns nine municipalities in the frontline zone. It also concerns all water utility facilities, including sewage and water supply. We spent about 300 million rubles from our own funds on this. We allocated about 100 million for the purchase of backup generation for all healthcare facilities throughout the region. Our energy supply companies are preparing for a difficult winter. In this regard, we face significant risks of losing heating in large settlements, such as Belgorod. In this regard, we know that at the level of the Ministry of Construction of the Russian Federation, separate sites are being established. Equipment is assembled there, which can be promptly delivered to affected cities across the country in the event of major accidents. For our regions, such as the Kursk, Bryansk, and Belgorod regions, such sites could be created in the Voronezh area. Primarily, these should be mobile boiler houses 
and additional backup generation. Medium and large capacity generators are also needed so that depending on the situation in Kursk, Bryansk or Belgorod, assistance can be quickly provided. That's all from me. I apologize, also Alexander Vasilyevich Bogomaz mentioned that. I also support this proposal for self-defense, requesting support for funding from the federal budget, as per your directive, which has been formalized. We have formed regiments. We can deploy a fairly large number of people, about 6,000. These are two regiments that are already performing combat tasks throughout the entire border zone. However, we understand that it is difficult to maintain such a number of people as they perform these tasks completely free of charge. Based on the current situation and yesterday's work within the framework of the Defense Minister's directive, we understand that without systematic support in terms of payment for our self-defense, we cannot manage on our own. Therefore, I support the Bryansk region. Thank you. Denis Valentinovich, in conclusion, I will give you the floor on this topic. The issues currently raised by the governor of the Belgorod region, funding for territorial defense, support for small and medium-sized businesses, fiber optic communication, identification of children who vacationed in certain regions of the country, and identification of children outside the Belgorod region. The point is that all the speeches today speak of serious problems. While you are considering all this, I would like to give the floor to Marat Shakazyanovich Kusnulin. This morning, we discussed issues related to the construction sector in the border area. I would ask him to briefly report on the situation now, so that colleagues can hear. Please, Marat Shakazyanovich. Dear Vladimir Vladimirovich, as per your directive, the government, together with the region, is systematically working to support citizens who have lost their homes due to shelling. Issues related to housing provision, infrastructure restoration, and preparation for the autumn winter period are discussed almost daily in the working group on the special infrastructure project. We have full cooperation with the CTO headquarters, they participate with us, so all decisions are made jointly with the governors. All requests from the governor are reviewed daily and we promptly make decisions on all possible issues. The necessary funding has been allocated based on the region's requests. We have assembled the required number of construction and labor resources, as well as equipment. One of our focuses is the restoration of housing. We are working in two areas, compensation for lost housing and major repairs. I will focus on the Kursk region, for the restoration of housing in the Kursk region, 1.8 billion rubles have been allocated. Payments have been received by 205 families out of the 300 planned. Yesterday at a government meeting, we allocated an additional 10.7 billion rubles. This will allow more families to acquire housing. Additionally, 300 million rubles have been allocated for major housing repairs in the Kursk region. Assistance will be provided to those affected by the shelling. This will support 397 families. In total, we estimate that 2,600 families will receive assistance. Payments are provided based on citizens' applications. Work has been organized in the regions to receive such applications. As additional requests come in from the regions, the government will promptly allocate the necessary funding. The same work is established in the Belgorod and Bryansk regions, where we are in constant contact with the governors. We have also begun assessing all damaged infrastructure, including social and road infrastructure. We have agreed that we are now preparing estimates and project documentation as needed.
говорили, что мы делаем проектно-сметную документацию при необходимости, как только будет возможность оперативно приступим к As soon as possible, we will promptly begin restoring this infrastructure, primarily the roads. We have already organized all this work. We are preparing for the heating season. Overall, the preparation of the Kursk region is at 76%, Bryansk at 75%, and Belgorod at 56%. We have decided to create emergency repair teams and special services. We are considering the mobilization of necessary portable boiler houses. Such work is already underway in the new territories. I believe we will resolve these issues soon. Everything is proceeding as planned, no issues. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Mikhail Albertovich Morashko, please tell us about the situation with healthcare in these regions. Dear Vladimir Vladimirovich, esteemed colleagues, the following measures have been taken in the Kursk region. First, a mobile multi-specialty hospital was deployed on the very first day. Second, additional teams consisting of 321 people are working. These are highly qualified specialists from federal centers in Moscow and the region, as well as from FMBA. The ambulance service has been strengthened. In total, 187 teams are currently involved, including specialists from other regions of the Russian Federation. Fourth, all evacuation routes have been organized, ensuring full coordination. As the head of the All-Russian Disaster Medicine Service, I have ensured full interaction with FMBA and Rospotrebnadzor. And Rossel Koznadzor. Regarding issues concerning volunteers, we involved our medical students. This was especially necessary in the early days. Our universities are actively engaged in training primary health care. All necessary additional resources have been arranged. The Prime Minister has been briefed, all instructions have been given and are being fully implemented. In the Belgorod region, disaster medicine services have been additionally involved, specialists are working and all evacuation routes have been regulated. Ambulance brigades, totaling 115 vehicles, are operating under high load. We support them in every possible way, including ensuring safety, as in the Kursk region. We are in full contact with the regional leadership. Planned medical assistance in the Kursk and Belgorod regions has been redirected to medical organizations where necessary. In the Belgorod region, there is an additional need for special transport. This issue was discussed at the headquarters, and everything is supported. In the Bryansk region, all evacuation and interaction routes are organized in case of necessity. Ninety-six ambulance medical teams are working. There is currently no need to involve additional specialists. However, as per your directive, the disaster medicine system is structured to be fully prepared. If necessary, we deploy and send specialists and medical personnel to where they are needed. There are no losses in the bed capacity in the Bryansk region, so assistance is provided as usual. Everyone who was in the temporary accommodation centers is receiving medical care, including medication. I personally went and observed how this is happening in practice so everything is under full control. There are no additional questions. Thank you. The report is concluded. All right. Thank you. The Ministry of Emergency Situations, please. Kurenkov Vyacheslav Alexandrovich. Dear Vladimir Vladimirovich, esteemed colleagues, from nine municipal districts of the region, more than 152,000 people were subject to evacuation, of which over 114,000 have already been evacuated. Most people went to stay with relatives and friends. An operational headquarters has been set up to receive and accommodate citizens arriving from border areas. 
For the evacuation, 98 buses and 118 train compositions are planned, which will be used as necessary depending on the operational situation. More than 10,000 people have been accommodated in 28 subjects of the Russian Federation, of which more than 2,800 are children. Additionally, places have been prepared for 44,000 people. Work on increasing the reserve of temporary accommodation centers continues. Evacuated citizens are receiving comprehensive support. They are provided with necessary medical and psychological assistance, as well as informational support. A multi-channel hotline operates around the clock, having received over 11,000 inquiries. Furthermore, Social issues of evacuated citizens are being addressed, including employment and enrolling children in kindergartens and schools. An operational group of the Russian Ministry of Emergency Situations continues to work in the region. The tasks of the operational group include coordinating the actions of the RSCAS forces, organizing evacuation, and ensuring the livelihood of the population, as well as delivering and distributing humanitarian aid. 2,500 tons of various cargo have been delivered to the Kursk region. This is necessary to support citizens, including property from state reserve warehouses, automotive equipment, power plants, water tanks and purification installations, as well as bottled water, food, baby food, personal hygiene products and medicines are being supplied. The total number of forces and resources in the Kursk region is about 2,000 people and almost 700 units of equipment. More than 850 people and 250 units of equipment from the Russian Ministry of Emergency Situations are involved. I want to note that while providing assistance to the population, employees of the Ministry of Emergency Situations, administration workers, doctors and volunteers are regularly subjected to terrorist acts by armed formations of Ukraine. In this regard, constant interaction with units of the Russian Ministry of Defense and the National Guard is organized for conducting humanitarian operations. As part of increasing the grouping of forces and resources, additional forces of the Russian Ministry of Emergency Situations, including a combined pyrotechnic unit, have been deployed to the Kursk region. As of today, an area of over 10 hectares has been cleared of explosive devices. The radiation, chemical and biological protection units of the Russian Ministry of Emergency Situations have intensified monitoring of the radiation situation in the Kursk, Belgorod and Rostov regions, as well as in Zaporizhia and the Republic of Crimea. In case the situation worsens, the necessary reserve of forces and resources of the Russian Ministry of Emergency Situations is ready. Dear Vladimir Vladimirovich, in accordance with the decision of the Government Commission, the situation in the Kursk and Belgorod regions has been recognized as a federal-level emergency, and a federal response level has been established. As of today, over 120,000 applications have been submitted by citizens in the Kursk region. The discussion is about a one-time financial support of 15,000 rubles, which has already been provided to more than 11,380 people. To alleviate the burden on the affected regions, some applications from residents of the Kursk region are being transferred for processing to other areas. I would like to mention Oleg Nikolaevich Koshemyako, who is assisting both directly and electronically from the Primorsky Krai. 97 people are working in the unit. The speed of work with citizens will now be increased. Payments related to the loss of property are temporarily not being made, as the current situation does not allow commissions to assess the damage. Once the situation stabilizes, this work will be organized immediately. In addition, in accordance with your decision, 820 million rubles have been allocated in the Kursk region for the payment of one-time assistance to evacuees. These payments are made by the region. Assistance has been provided to more than 40,000 citizens. 
In the Belgorod region, payments are also being made to citizens affected by shelling from Ukrainian armed formations. More than 18,000 citizens have already received assistance totaling over 350 million rubles. A corresponding subsidy has been allocated from the reserve fund of the government of the Russian Federation to the budget of the Belgorod region. Dear Vladimir Vladimirovich, the situation is under special control. We continue our work. The report is concluded. Thank you.